Welcome to the Single Sidebar Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam I Am. We are elated that you decided to tune into this podcast. We're going to be focusing on three areas, health, wealth, and traveling well for singles living in the 21st century. So let me pull you to the side and help you get your life together so that you can maximize your season of singleness. Welcome to another edition of Single Sidebar Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Sam I am. I am so glad to be with you guys today. As you can see, this is a different um, background, (laughs) a different location. And that is because, of course, we are in quarantine. Um, Mm -hmm. The whole COVID-19 pandemic, I do want to first off say that I am praying for everyone who has experienced a loss, anyone who has been directly impacted by the the virus, if you have contracted the virus, I'm praying for your healing. For those who, again, have lost loved ones, praying for your peace and this during this time. For those of you who are struggling, and this is one of the things we're going to talk about, emotional wellness and mental wellness on today. Those who are struggling with this whole social distancing, I'm praying for you guys. Just know that if no one else tells you or no one else has told you, I am praying for you. Um, and so as we continue on with this edition on today, I have a phenomenal gentleman in the building with us today. Oh, Hey, I'm so excited. You boosted me up now. I hope I live up to what you're saying. You will. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gene Hoskins. Am I saying your name right? You said what? Am I saying your name right? Yeah, you, yeah. I, yeah, like I don't right. be saying it correctly. I'm well, sometimes, it sometimes, you have, sometimes you have it, but you killed it. This, it was right this time. <laughs> And so he's in the building with us on today. Um, He is a licensed counselor. And so I'm going to have him um, introduce himself and share more with you guys. Hey, family. First of all, Sabrina is just the epitome (laughs) of Black girl magic. So it's it's an honor and privilege to be here. Um, Um, My name is Gene Hoskins. I am a native of North Carolina, born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina, matriculated through CMS schools. I went to UNC Chapel Hill for undergrad. Um, got my b- double bachelor's in psychology and sociology. Um, then I thought I was going to be a dentist, so it made me go through Greensboro for a few years where I met some amazing people like Dr. Sabrine and other people who I still remain in contact with today. But I decided that mental health was still my main passion, which I discovered in high school. And so I eventually went to North Carolina Central, where I matriculated for their program and did research and taught and everything and got my master's in clinical psychology. And then I got my, did my internship at Duke. So I, I studied Ooh. psychosomatic. Yeah, so I was a little bit everywhere. And so I've been in mental health a little bit over 10 years now. Um, I have my own practice, which I opened up last year called Peace of Mind Psychological Services, PLLC, where I'm the CEO and lead psychologist. And for another company, I manage about 40 different clinicians with different backgrounds because I'm the clinical director. So I love this stuff. I just don't talk about it, but I actually really, really like it. And so God has allowed me to do mental health and my passion, my, 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 my self-care, which is music. And so God allows me to travel the world doing music and releasing music. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. And we're going to hear some of his music later on. He's going to give us a rendition of something. Okay. And he does have a new single out, guys. You've got to make sure that you get it. But we're going to talk more about that. Let okay. me jump cool, into cool. myself. And so, um, Jean, uh, thank you so much, first off, for agreeing to be on the show on today. For and sure. So, um, there are several questions I wanted to ask you. During this season, um, as a licensed, cl- uh, I can never say that word, clinician? Clinician. Clinician. Uh-huh. Y'all pray for me. Um, and so, as a licensed clinician, uh-huh. and, you know, what are some of the things that you have seen um, that are happening within our community um, currently, and mentally and emotionally with this whole COVID-19. Absolutely, so I'm telling people to keep in mind that we have never in 75 years seen anything like this. The last time we saw something like this was something called the Spanish flu. Mm-hmm. And the death toll for that particular pandemic was 50 million people. Whereas we might not see 50 million people collectively, we've not seen every single 
country in the world touched by one common enemy. Um, we're saying that it doesn't matter your race, how much money you have, your religious background, your sexual orientation, it does not matter any of that. This disease does not discriminate. However, we are seeing that African Americans and minorities, particularly African Americans, are being disproportionately impacted, which we'll kind of unpack that later. Um, what we're noticing is that we all are, we have, we're experiencing something called a collective trauma. Collectively, we all are experiencing trauma, okay? Trauma is, this, is pretty much defined as something like a deep psychological or deep emotional wound, okay? Why do you say it's a trauma, Mr. Gene? I'm saying it's a trauma because imagine going through life normal and all of a su su sudden something comes through and you have to, you're removed from your job, people get let go of jobs, family members that had planned out their vision board and people who had plans for family members, all of a sudden that's cut off because they're dying from disease we didn't see coming. Imagine people losing their jobs and imagine, you know, you're waking up and all the time you're gonna turn on the news, you're seeing death, you're seeing bodies carried out. Mm -hmm. That is trauma, that is deep, that's a deep psychological wound. And so I'm telling people, typically in pandemics, there are certain trends we look for. There's going to be an increase in divorce because mm. a lot more people in the house together. Most of the time when people are married, they go to work and they come home. But more mm -hmm. people stay in the house together and they're realizing we might not really like each other. <laughs> right? We're seeing that you see an increase in abuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm, because people are together more. Right? And some people just lack the skills to deal with conflict. We're seeing an increase in substance abuse and dependence, mm -hmm. especially those who have a history of it. Um, typically, in, in order to deal and cope with anxiety or the deep trauma we're seeing, they, they, they use substance to kind of help numb that. Also, uh, you know, uh, pandemics bring, bring, brings us into a place of isolation, okay? And isolation, I tell people, can be both good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. Isolation, people feel like isolation is a cutting off of social interaction. And I tell people isolation is a place of revelation and it's a place of honesty. And sometimes people just can't deal with that. Um, with that being said, they kind of engage in some substance abuse. Um, in isolation, we tend to see more increased suicidal ideations. We, we, we tend to see more people do suicide attempts. I, literally, I've been working every single day nonstop. If I'm not doing podcasts or Zoom calls or talks, I'm doing therapy. If I'm not doing therapy, I'm planning. If I'm not planning, I'm doing supervision. I, it does not stop because this pandemic has affected everybody from church to, I've talked to mayors, I've talked to preachers. I, I can't believe it. I've talked to doctors because everybody has been impacted, right? Right. And so, so collectively, we all are experiencing this trauma. And so those are some trends we're noticing just across the board, whether you're married, whether you're not married, uh, we're just seeing an increase in some of these things. And typically after a pandemic ends, we do see an influx in divorce rates. Wow. wow. And so you touched on um, several things. And so I want to backtrack real quick when we're talking about um, the increase in abuse. So mm -hmm. As an educator, you know, I'm always thinking about the children. And so now we have the kids who come to school as safety as um, school is their safety. It's, yeah. It's a safety because of. And the school is a place that feeds them too. Bingo. Bingo. And so having that, the school being your place of um, nourishment, the place of safety, children who are unfortunately being sexually abused, being physically abused and different things like that. As an ed educator, when we return back in August, what things can we do to help our students? Because like you said, we've never faced this before. We see trauma in the school system. We see, you know, we know kids have these traumatic, but now you're talking about months of issues building up coming mm -hmm. back in August. So mm -hmm. some of the things we might be able to expect or what can we do to help our students? Right, I tell people, I, I really, I don't think educators, some are thinking about it, but I don't realize, I don't know if y'all realize what you're going to be up against when you all go back in August. Yep. Because you all are going to be up against some academic issues. You're going to be up against some behavioral issues. Um, again, some of these children 
uh, don't really get to eat like that. And so that's, I'm so glad that some programs are now, you know, allowing kids to go to school and whatnot. But I'm, what, I, what I tell teachers to do is you're going to have to be more perceptive about each student and being intentional about knowing each student and having them. Especially one thing I know is about students and children, when they trust you, they open up. Very true. And I told people, you have to have an atmosphere. You have to establish that rapport that your kids feel that your classroom is a safe place. Mm -hmm. And once they feel it's a safe place and they then open up, you then have what you need to make a plan for them. But I tell teachers, first of all, start off with a mindfulness exercise. Do you know what mindfulness, mindfulness is? Mindfulness is a particular practice um, and is rooted in uh, just pretty much a lot of religious practices where one becomes aware or highly perceptive of their body in the moment. And so what I do is I sit, sit in my chair, close my eyes, and I focus on my breathing. I focus on the sounds around me. I focus on everything, right? Is my heart beating fast? And what it does, it forces me to focus on everything physiologically where I can't really focus on anything emotionally or anything that's stressing me out and making me angry. I tell teachers to do that because what happens is most teachers have 30 different kids coming to their classroom from 30 different environments. <laughs> How do I get 30 different kids from 30 different environments on one page? Mm -hmm. I do a mindfulness exercise. So it may be that you might have to implement that the first few days of school to mm -hmm. kind of get everybody calm and chill, right? Mm -hmm. You want to also have to remind kids about classroom etiquette, uh, the rules of your classroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this also may require you to partner with the guidance counselor and maybe just kind of process what COVID was and life after COVID. Because a lot of kids I'm doing therapy with, they're scared because their parents are literally passing down anxiety related to mm -hmm. the virus. So they're feeding off the anxiety of their parents. And so mm -hmm. they're really kind of ill-informed about what COVID is. And so I'm really, really encouraging people to be sure that um hey parents please make sure you're educating your children and be teachers and a fellow therapist and make sure we're educating them so that we're filling in the blanks they may have and alleviating anxiety about it good wow wow oh that's a, wow that's that's good that's mm -hmm. really good and and so i need to share this with my educator friends mm -hmm. um and so my last question before we dive into your music mm -hmm. um, would be pertaining to singles. So now you, you touched on it um, during the first um, question. You talked mm -hmm. about, you know, having that, that time of isolation and where it becomes mm -hmm. isolation. So for someone like me, who's an intro extrovert, I'm, both, I'm in the mi middle. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't mind being in the house. I, mm -hmm. Let me not tell on myself. But, um, <laughs> you know, the, like you said, having that time of revelation and creativity, but then you have those who, you know, this is just like the pits for them. So as a single individual, how are you, how, what, what things can we do to help us during this time mentally and emotionally? Absolutely. I tell people, I think people think that social interaction is just physical space and being around each other. And that's not true. Social touch and social distance is not the same as social interaction. For example, you can have a Zoom call with your best friends and still get social interaction. Mm -hmm. There's an absence of the social touch and distance, but I tell people, make sure you're maintaining social interaction with the ones that matter. Stay in touch with family members and friends. Maintain relationships that are good for your mental health. This is a really good chance to also weed out relationships that maybe not are the best for your mental health. Right? Remember I said isolation kind of brings revelation and honesty. Mm -hmm. And you got time to think a little more. And you, you can't really expect everybody to reach out because everybody's dealing with COVID differently. But it also gives you a chance to kind of look back over the past few years and realize what's been good for you and what hasn't been good for you. This is a really good chance. I tell people, a lot of people say, my vision board is gone. I can't. I, I'm not good at my vision board. I say, no, no, no. We may can't do certain things on a vision board, but we can flush out the framework. We can build a skeleton so that when we are released, we hit the ground running, right? This is a really good chance to get a plan together, okay? Us being idle, us being isolated does not stop us from working. This is a really good chance to plan. So when, when the time comes, you're not planning and exerting energy. All we got to do when we get out of here is now just put the energy into what we plan, 
right? Here's a really good chance as a single to determine what you really, really want. That's what you want in a spouse, right? Yes. Write your list. Here's a chance to read books on how to not just be a better single, but a better person. person. Um, get yourself time to get adjusted to life in quarantine. Uh, keep busy with activities that mentally st stimulate you. Okay, mom may be music and writing, mom may be reading, yours may be knitting, sewing, and cooking. Learn a new recipe, exercise, um, sunlight. Uh, people don't understand, sunlight is really, really advantageous to, to mood, right? Making sure you're getting enough sleep, your sleep regimen is good, right? I noticed mine got off a little bit because me and Netflix was just chilling, you know? And I would go to bed at like two and wake up at like, and I realized that schedule wasn't conducive for my, my planning for when I get out of quarantine. Okay. Don't feel the pressure to produce in quarantine because some people are really, really going through some things. But I tell people there'll be moments where you feel strength. There'll be moments where you feel motivated. There'll be moments where you feel inspired. And those are the moments you use to create. Those are the moments you use to plan, right? We're not going to use this whole moment in quarantine as an excuse to not create. Right. or use uh, as an excuse not to plan so those moments where you get strength those moments where you get a little wind use those moments say, this is what I'm this is the time I'm going to use to plan for my business research what it takes to get a business read books on people who mastered what you're trying to get wow. into you know that's good um that's good. this is a really good chance to identify like I said healthy relationships right and unhealthy relationships to know the difference I tell people, a lot of people feel like when people become one and they're in mesh, that's a healthy relationship. And I always tell people that's not always a healthy relationship. Maintain, maintaining individuality in the context of love and having compromised the healthy relationship. Just kind of reading books on that and understanding what you want. This is the perfect time. We've always, you, I know I always heard friends say, and I always said, I just wish we could just have a few days where we can just kind of sit in the house and just get life together. And guess what? We've had eight weeks. Listen. And so my got thing more is, we, to always, go. we got more. And so we've been praying this and we have it. So now what are you going to do with it? I tell you what, that is the truth. Because I, I, I know I am guilty of saying it. Like, me I, too. But I just need an extra day. I just need an extra. Me too. Day. Me too. You got an extra two months. A whole bunch, and then you got to. And then so my thing is, when you get these extra days, and you look back over the days and realize you didn't do anything with it, then that's a problem with you. Ooh, we y'all heard that? That is a problem with you. This is what you've been praying for. This is what you've been asking for, and now you got it, and you haven't done anything with it. That's a problem mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there we are very human. So some of us. Some of us have been impacted by COVID. Some people have lost family members. And so take this moment to heal, right? Yeah. Take the moment to heal. Uh, myself, I was one of the first cases of COVID in North Carolina, right? So there was a period where I was kind of down. But when I got back up, I hit the ground running. He did, y'all. He did. Yeah, hit the ground running. And so I understand we are being impacted. I'm not negating that. Like I said, we've all experienced something, a collective trauma, a deep psychological wound to everybody. There's nobody in the world that has not been impacted by what we're seeing. That's right. That's Apparently right. the death toll hit a million, million people today. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I tell people in order to maintain your peace, make sure you, I said peace is work. Peace doesn't just sometimes happen. You, mm -hmm. peace, peace requires you to move things. Peace, peace requires you to be honest, right? Peace requires you to turn off things that are trying to steal it. Um, and so, for example, if I'm looking at the news all the time and the news is talking about, you know, anxiety provoking, you know, uh, headlines and I'm seeing bodies being carried in and out of the hospitals and stuff, that may not be advantageous for my peace. Okay, if I'm talking to friends and family members who are constantly trying to bombard me with anxiety or, you know, you know, just, you know, that may not be beneficial for my peace. Right now, I can't handle it. Maybe in a few weeks, I can handle talking to you. But right now, I have to protect what's, what's precious. And right now, my peace is precious. That's good. And that is the truth. And so Jean was talking about, you know, taking this time to read. I know one of the books that I'm currently reading is by Dr. Darius Daniels called Relationship. Me too intelligence i mean he's one of my favorites mine really too. like y'all when i tell you i cannot I, it took me how many weeks y'all better get that book 
I'm listening to the audiobook and I keep going back to number one. I'm now getting to number three because I've been on number one and number two constantly going back yeah. and back. Understanding that how to categorize even people in my life. And I mean, I'm telling you, like that book, y'all, get the book. And of course I got Michael Todd's book, um, Relationship. Oh, that, came out, that came out today. Everybody named Mama got that. Tell me about yeah. it. I'm going to have to tell you. Actually, I got two copies. So I might just, just, I'll just send you one of mine because okay. I got the pre-release copy and now I got the official copy. So, okay. you know, I got all my top stuff. But, um, but thank you, Jean, for clarifying that for us and um, allowing us to have a deeper and a better understanding of what we need to be doing during this time. And so I know one of the ways that, you know, many individuals are getting through is through music. And so, if you guys don't know, Gene is a recording artist. Yeah, he has, sent, he, has sung, he has sung for some of the greats, and he <laughs> um, has his own EP on out. He got it all, okay? And so, Gene, share with us what you have been doing, your new projects and different yeah. things. Yeah, God is so good. I've been, I've been able to, I made a promise to myself. I've sang my whole life, but I said, once you finish your master's, you can then go out to music. And um, when I did it, God began to open up doors. So I've been singing for some people for years. I've been with Jonathan Nelson for almost four or five years. I've been with Miranda Curtis for years. Uh, some stuff with John P. Key. I mean, the list goes on. God has blessed me. But last year, I was able to, instead of just being featured on people's albums, I was able to release my first musical offering called The Undefeated EP. And it did really well, and it charted. And um, so that was my first baby. But it's interesting. I ha I've been working on my album for two years, and I'm pretty much done writing it um, in the process of just getting mixed and mastered. And a song came to me after I was pretty much done my album called Perform Again. And I wasn't going to put it on this album. And I felt one day when I went to a church, I had to release that song. I had never done it before. And when I released a song, the response at that church was really amazing. And I said, oh, okay, I'm going to put it on the back burner. And then God gave me the opportunity in December on New Year's Eve to sing on the Word Network. And when I sang on the Word Network, I performed that song. And the response was, you know, good. And so God gave me the pretty much go ahead and record this song. And I said, I'm going to record this song, although I pretty much thought I had my single. I had my single that I thought I was going to release, and I had the album cover that I was going to release, but I listened to God. And the song is simply a song of faith saying, you know, we believe in your power. You're able to do it again. You're well able to perform. Um, and we believe in your power. And this is a really song of faith and encouragement. And little did I know before I released a song that I would be diagnosed with COVID at the ministry assignment. And so God just showed me that the things we create, he's going he's gonna to test it to see where your heart is. He's going to really test it in. So once I went through it, I already had to, you know, was going to release it, but the song just made so much more sense. And so I released it last Friday and the response has been absolutely overwhelming. God has been so good. And I mean, I don't even know how some of these people get it, but it's literally from London to Africa to Jamaica. It's everywhere. And so uh, the song is called Perform Again. It was released Friday. And you can pretty much get it anywhere on any digital me media outlet. Mm -hmm. So go to YouTube. It's a lyric video and all that good stuff. So now I know you're going to sing us a verse of the song. Get the people. Okay, let me see. The people need it in their life. <laughs> Let me get a little water because I've been talking, you know. <laughs> it says, <clears throat> We know that you're able, you will do it. You have the power to perform. We know that you're able, you will do it. You have the power to perform, oh, perform, oh, you will perform, oh, no. we believe in you. Thank you. Um, please make sure that you all go get this thing. You know, I'm an Amazon girl, so you know it's on Amazon. It's on, yeah. So you need to get yours. Y'all, please, please. iTunes everywhere. Bye-bye. Stream, stream, stream. <laughs> 
Yeah, make sure you get it. I will definitely put the link when we release the YouTube for um, this episode. I will definitely put direct link to the song so that you guys can have it. His social media handles, all that jazz. Please connect. Hey, I talk back. I talk back to people, so connect with me, okay? Yes, yeah, and he's very personable, so please definitely yeah. um, connect back with him. He's not one of them untouchables, okay? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> there goes. But anyway, <laughs> Dean, I am so appreciative that you came and dropped some knowledge on us today. Yeah, it's an honor to be here, Sabrina. I appreciate it, Dr. Sabrina. Thank you for that. Not the a problem. So tell them again, because he's in the Raleigh area, guys. Those of you who are looking for a, um, a therapist, mm -hmm. me during this time, you know, it's guys, let me tell you, I don't care how deep you are. I don't care how undeep you are. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how unsaved you are. Counseling is for everyone. It's for everyone. And so, okay. yeah, I'm in, I'm in my, my practice is located in Durham. And I service Raleigh, Durham, and greater areas, but I'm doing teletherapy. And so um, I'm, I'm seeing people all across. And so, um, you know, within reason, right? Um, but definitely my website is uh, www.pomps.org. Pomps.org. It stands for Peace of Mind Psychological Services. Go to my website. You'll see a bald-headed brother in a suit scroll all the way down and just connect with me and if i can't provide services for you i always and i'm telling you people call me all the time i always refer you to someone else who can um simply because i am that concerned with you getting connected and plugged in that's right that's right that's right and it's important guys it's very very important um i'm i, I practice what i pe preach excuse me i do practice what i preach and i am i do have my own personal counselor so please guys i'm telling you um during this time to find that that wholeness okay it's not just about those that that area we're going to touch here you want to be whole in all area well-rounded in every area and so we want to make sure that you guys during this time and then post covid you know, that you have someone that you can walk with, you know, whether it be spiritually, and then of course, also mentally, emotionally, and different things like that. And so again, again, two things, pumps, get connected with Jean if you're in the Durham Valley area, um, and you're looking for a therapist, get connected with Jean for music, because how many people got a therapist that can sing? That got ah. I mean, any black y'all. <laughs> And save. Come on, somebody. And save. And save to find a film with the Holy Ghost. Can you get excited? <laughs> All right. But, Gene, I appreciate you so much for coming on the show on today, guys. We're going to have to have him back when we actually get in the studio. We're going to yes. have to come do a whole, you know, whole rendition. We're going to have to have a question and answer, you know, uh, show where people call in and with them. Yes. Somebody. Yes. You know what? We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're definitely going to do that. And we'll just try to we, we find, figure out some platform. I'll ask my production person and see how we can make that happen. But we, yeah, we're going to do that. Let's do that. Let's plan on doing that. Um, I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Guys, again, thank you so much. This has been another episode of Single Sidebar Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam I am. I am so honored that you joined us on today and may the blessings of the Lord make it rich and adding no sorrows be upon you. And may we see you next time. Enjoy, guys. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Single Sidebar Podcast. It is our hope that you took away something from today's episode that you can immediately apply to your life. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram at the Single Sidebar Podcast or at Dr. Sam I Am One if you would like to continue the conversation from today. We do hope that you are able to join us for our next episode.